Tammy time. Hey, y'all. It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I guess I am live and Chris is in here making coffee. I am going to make sure that I'm coming in loud and clear. My dogs are going to fuss because me and Chris put them up. And I'm trying to see if you can see me okay. Chris, uh, peek your head down here and say hello. <laughs> He's making a cup of coffee. Oh, I'm sorry. Now come on. Okay. All right, hold on. He's fixing his coffee. He is um, making his nighttime coffee. And he's going to go out in the sunroom and sit down and watch his uh, YouTube. He's a YouTube man. I don't know which side. Now look. We can go, but two pieces of that left. <laughs> yeah. I just had two I'll pieces. Y'all, yeah, we made the best ever peanut brittle. It is um, microwave peanut brittle. <laughs> oh my gosh, is it good? You toast the, the you toast the peanuts in the oven for about eight minutes, and then you make the microwave brittle. And can I say it is every bit as good as it is on the stove? Hey, Chris. Yep. Just delicious. We got a video coming up. So we're we're gonna have a video coming up on that peanut brittle while we're gone. Y'all are going to see quite a few things while we're gone uh, that we have filmed already. We are leaving to go on vacation Wednesday in the newsletter. I put Tuesday, but y'all, you know how I am. I can be crazy. So I will not be leaving until Wednesday for those of y'all that uh, know already. I'm looking to make sure everybody's here. I know we're late tonight, but maybe uh, we'll have a few on here late. Bye, baby. I had to crack the dogs and run my husband out into the sunroom, but he's been up all day, so he's fine. Um, he's getting up really early in the morning and going fishing with Paul because he asked me, was I going to let him go on a charter while we were in Boston? I said, no. I'm sorry, honey, but we have not been on a vacation in 10 years unless it was a fishing vacation. So we are going to Boston without fishing. I said, the only way that you can get a charter, y'all can think I'm ugly if you want to, but I'm not being ugly. I fish all the time and he fishes all the time. But the only way he's going to be able to get a charter is if I get so bored that I'm just so bored and I'm like, okay. Let's go get a charter or you go get a charter and I'll talk to a real Southern woman or whatever we decide to do. But we're staying. Um, we get there Wednesday. We get on the airplane at uh, one around one o'clock. We get there around four o'clock. It's a one uh, way flight. We don't have a layover. I paid a little extra to do that because I did not want to stop. Um, and have to stop in either, you either stop in Charlotte or New York or there's different ones. But anyway, we're go going straight there. He's got a taxi, it's a boat taxi um, that picks us up at the airport and we go from the airport by boat on the harbor around to where we're staying because we're staying um, at a place that's on the harbor and I'm super excited I'm nervous not nervous but I'm anxious and full of anxiety and I don't know we have somebody that's going to help us with the dogs and look you know keep up with the house and and feed the birds and all that but um, I'm still getting anxious because I don't have all my video edited yet and I don't want to edit it while I'm there because um, y'all don't realize it but if if we do a video and we edit the video and even if we don't edit the video it's actually longer if we don't and we want to to put it on uh, Facebook or YouTube and we have to download it or export it it takes so long 
unless you've got a direct connect to the internet like we do here. It takes it can take an hour just to upload a file. So I want to make sure and get all my files. I've got four videos done. Um, and I want to make sure and get them all edited before we leave. So I am still behind because our newsletter went out today. I hope y'all got that. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter, go to the website and sign up for it. And so it went out today. It only goes out once a month. So if you've entered the contest today and decided to join the newsletter and you got it today, it don't normally come that fast. It only comes once a month. It comes on the second Monday of every month. Uh, but anyway, um, I worked all day. Well, most of the day on the website and the newsletter. And so tomorrow I'm going to spend all my day editing the videos. I'm hoping that we may or may, I, I don't really know. When we get down there, if I'm having such a good time that I don't want to turn on the camera because we haven't been anywhere in forever, then I'm going to do that. But if I, if we're such YouTubers and Facebookers, It'll, I'll be shocked if I don't want to go. I got to share this. Y'all know how I am. So um, we'll just have to wait and see when we get down there what happens. Tonight is a wonderful Bible study. We um, are going to be studying prayer. And I'm going to be honest with you. I struggle with prayer. I do not pray as much as I should. I know I don't. Matter of fact, when I was younger, I was so faithful, no matter what, to pray um, when I was a young girl. I mean, a, ne a day never went by, ever, that I didn't pray. And I would have to confess to you guys that days do go by that I lay down and I fall asleep and I do not pray enough. Or may not even even prayed for that day. And y'all, some of y'all might be shocked, and then some of y'all might not be shocked, but I'm a human just like everybody else. But after reading today's Bible study, um, I really see the need for me to pray more. And you're gonna find out why today, because it teaches us. I need to be still. It teaches us where we belong we really belong um kneeled down at the feet of jesus and we need to be humble and always be humble and you know whether you think about this being humbling or not prayer is a humbling experience anyone that takes the time out to pray to god takes the time out because they know who God is compared to who they are. And they know God can answer prayer. And that is a big deal. The fact that we speak to him through prayer. Um, so it's a beautiful Bible study. And it's a very valuable Bible study. If you please stay. And listen, and I had to read this three times. So when I read it to you, you've really got to pay attention and not be commenting and stuff like that, because this is a um, hard to get Bible study if you're not listening. So I uh, urge you to read it when we're finished tonight and do like I did sit there. I mean, I, when I do the Bible studies. I take at least 30 minutes to an hour to really think about all the words he says. I replace a lot of them to make them more um, what we would say in our day, because this guy lived in the 1800s in England and I'm in a, over here in America in 2021. So I would use verbiage that he wouldn't use. So I fix all of that for us so that it's easier for you to get the same gist as he meant. Because I use the words just in the way we would say it. Okay. So um, 
it's just a really good Bible study. I was looking and I do not have the scripture for some reason. I didn't copy the scripture onto the Bible study. I'm sorry. My goodness. It's Lamentations chapter 3, verse 41. Let us lift our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. I will copy and paste that when we get off. Um, let us lift our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. How often do we really lift our hands to God? If you're like me and you were if you were born and bred in a Baptist church, you may not have ever lifted your hands to God unless it were in desperation at a prayer time. Now, I do lift my hands sometimes. Now, I am still a Baptist, but there are some Baptist churches that have a little bit of life in them, and you can raise your hand. And um, anyway, just think about that. Have you been in the spirit enough and been talking to your Savior enough that you would lift your hands into the Lord and worship? Um, now, this says, and let me hop over to where I wrote it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this before we start, okay? It's going to reference the mercy seat. The mercy seat is referenced at the very end. And he says, we thank you, great God, for the mercy seat. A choice proof of thy marvelous loving kindness. Now, some of you may not know what the mercy seat is. So we're going to talk about that just for a minute. And um, then we're going to talk about prayer. And the reason I want to do that is because some of you believe that we don't have a direct connection to pray to God. And can I say we do? And there's scripture for it. And so I'm going to go through that a little bit with you tonight. Um, I'm going to tell you what the mercy seat is. And then I'm going to tell you what happened when Jesus Christ died that had a significant change in the mercy seat, which shows that we have access to God through Christ. Um, the mercy seat was built in the Old Testament in the in the first. Um, it says it, it's it's mentioned twenty more than twenty times in the Bible. It's first described in Exodus, which is the second book of the Bible. And God tells them to make a mercy seat of pure gold. And he tells them how big to make it. And they put cherubims on one end of it, one on each end. And cherubims are angels, figures of angels. And um, it was the lid. To the Ark of the Testimony. Now the Ark of the Testimony. Had. The. Ten Commandments in it. That God gave to Moses. And. Um, this Ark. Was. Um, put into the Holy of Holies. And they built a veil. Okay. And the only way, the only way that anybody could go into the mercy seat, where the mercy seat was, because that's where God was, his actual presence was, was once a year. And the priest went in and he had to do all kind of things to his body and be cleansed and uh, in order to go in there. And it was so powerful because it was in the presence of God that they would tie a rope around his leg so that if he entered and if for some reason he was not clean, 
he would die. He would be struck dead and they could pull him out of there with a rope because nobody could go in to get him without being struck dead. Okay. Um, it was very holy. Now, um, that gives you an idea of who God is and who we are. Because even the priest had to go through all of this in order to be able to go into the presence of God once a year. And how in the world can we ever, being who we are, we could never. But when Jesus Christ died on the cross, the veil was torn. Now, there was a veil that enclosed the mercy seat in the tabernacle, and the veil was about a foot wide. It was so thick, a very fine linen and cloth. And when Christ died on the cross, the veil split from top to bottom into the dead rose out of the ground. There was several humongous things that happened when Christ died and shed his blood as our Savior. And because the veil was torn, it showed that the ultimate sacrifice had been made. And now we had access to God through Jesus Christ. We don't have access to God through just who we are. But we do through Jesus Christ. So therefore, you can pray to God all you want um, when you know who Jesus is. Now, many people pray to God even when they are not saved. And uh, I'm sure that God does still hear some of the prayers. Um, but we do have access. All right. Now we're going to hop over. The Bible study and everybody may have an opinion on whether or not God hears your prayers when you're not saved um, and I'm not going to go into that but I just find it hard to believe that if anybody would humble themselves enough to pray to God that shows that they're acknowledging who God is it doesn't show that they are acknowledging, acknowledging who Jesus Christ is and you have to acknowledge who Jesus Christ is for he is the way to heaven. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, that's the way you have access to the Father. Truly have access. Okay. Now, this says, this is from Charles Spurgeon, his Bible study. And this is this morning's reading. It says, the act of prayer teaches us our unworthiness, which is a very valuable lesson for such proud beings as we are. And we are proud beings. We think we deserve a lot. Not just from God, but from the world, from our community, from our friends, from our family, from our church. We think we deserve things. It's how we're made. It's how the commercials talk to us. We think we need something and deserve something even when we don't have the money because we deserve it. But that's not true. And being in an act of prayer is humbling ourselves and letting God know that we know he's above us, that we know that he has the authority to answer our prayers. It says, if God gave us benefits without pressuring us to pray for them, we should never know how poor we are. Now, I thought about that when I read it. If God gave us benefits without pressuring us to pray for them, we should never know how poor we are. Now, I'm going to be open and real here right now. I'm pretty blessed. And, but when I read this, I realized that in order to know how poor we are, we have to be talking to God about our benefits. 
Now we're taught that we're not supposed to pray for things. We're just supposed to pray for God's will most of the time. But you're going to hear a little bit different application here tonight. And I thought about it. And I'm going to be honest with you. After really thinking on what he's saying to me tonight, I realize that I may be missing out on quite a bit. Because since I was a little girl, and even while I had cancer, I had the hardest time asking God for anything. No, not everybody's like that. There's people that pray for cars and pray for things that they don't even need. But there's been times when I wanted things and I didn't pray for them because it was wants, okay? Not needs, not the will of God, but it could in fact be the will of God to bless us with things when we're following his will and we love him and we're being a witness it's possible that he would want to give us benefits but it's possible that he might not because we don't ask you know there there is a verse that says you know not what you have because you do not ask i didn't write it down and i'm i'm just trying to bring it up out of my head and y'all know how my head works it's not the best head in the world to bring up the scripture um, but I do know that after reading this, boy, did it make me think a little bit. Matter of fact, a lot of this makes us think tonight. If God gave us benefits without pressuring us to pray for them, we should never know how poor we are. But a true prayer is an inventory of wants, a catalog of necessities, and a surprise of hidden hardship. So he's telling us that a true prayer, if we're really praying to the God, the creator of the universe, and we're really praying earnestly from our heart, we're going to have some wants. We're going to have some necessities, needs, and then we're going to have some hardship. And in order to really be real with God and open up your heart, you would share all of this with God. While it is an application to divine will, and get this, he's saying that prayer is like filling out an application for wealth, but not worldly wealth, divine wealth. If you've not been praying, you're probably not too wealthy. Do you want to be wealthy? I mean, this is, this is just, I just love this Bible study. It just opened up a, a new world to me tonight in the prayer department. And not just because I want all these benefits, but because it's true. It's true. It says it is a confession of human emptiness. While is it, while it is an application to divine wealth, it is a confession of human emptiness. So while you're confessing your empty feelings and your state, you are filling out the application for divine wealth. Do you ever think of it that way? I sure did it. The most healthy state of a Christian is to always be empty in self and constantly depending upon the Lord for supplies. Constantly depending on the Lord for supplies. To be always poor in self and rich in Jesus. Weak as water personally, but mighty through God to do great adventures. And therefore, the use of prayer, because while it does adore God, it lays the creature where it should be in the very dust. What about that? Prayer 
is in itself at a distance from the answer which it is, brings. Prayer is in itself at a distance from the answer which it brings a great benefit to the Christian. So prayer itself, the actual prayer, so humbling, is so different than the blessing that it brings because the blessing comes from God, God of the universe, God our Father, Jesus Christ our Savior. Our humbly bowing and praying is so apart from that which it brings. Prayer strengthens this. This will just really get you get you going. Prayer feathers. Oh, here it is. As the runner gains strength for the race by daily exercising. So for the great race of life, we acquire energy by the holy labor of prayer. Now, we may not can run like a runner anymore, but let me tell you what we can do. We can pray. It says, as a runner gains strength, a runner has to run and exercise in order to win the race. He has to. We have to pray in order to acquire energy by the holy light, to acquire the scriptural and the spiritual energy that we need. Prayer feathers the wings of God's young eaglets. And I was thinking when I was reading this, when I was young, about how faithful I was. And it made me think of me as a child. I was a young eaglet. Eaglet. Not in your 20s and 30s. That's when you decide that you're grown and you, you want to do everything you want to do. I'm talking about when you're little. And you're still pure and holy and untouched by sin. I mean, you still ha you have sin, but it's different. Um, you know what I mean. Prayer feathers the wings of God's young e eaglets that they may learn to mount above the clouds. Prayer strengthens the thighs of God's warriors. And sends them forth to combat with their tendons braced and their muscles firm. A sincere pleader comes out of his closet, even as the sun rises from the cavities of the east, rejoicing like a strong man to run his race. Prayer is that uplifted hand of Moses which defeats the Amalekites more than the sword of Joshua. It's the arrow shot from the bedchamber of a prophet predicting defeat to the Syrians. Think about this, y'all. Think about how strong he's saying prayer makes us. Are you strong today? Because when I read this, I thought, oh my, how weak I am. How weak, how strong I could be. How strong, how much more could my life be? How much more abundant would it be? How much happier and full of joy would I be? If I would just strengthen myself in prayer. It's easy to do, but so hard when you're living in the flesh. People can say whatever they want to. You can be saved and not close to God. It's so easy to do. You can be saved and live in your flesh daily. You can. And not even do it on purpose. And not even do it, do it, many of us would, 
would do that and think that we're righteous because we're following other rules and reg regulations of the church or the law or just um, life in general, what people think is good. But are, are we really strengthened in prayer? It's exciting. When you go back and read this when I'm off of here tonight and you go back and read it, if you read it two or three times, you get plumb excited about how strong you could be if you would just only humble yourself and bow to the Lord more. I mean, I pray to God just like you probably do in my head every once in a while. Well, you know, Lord, this or that or, you know, when you're in the car, you give him a few minutes or but do we really earnestly pray? And strengthen ourselves in a prayer closet? I don't. Not like I should. So this has really been good for me tonight. And I pray it's been good for you. It says, prayer fortifies human weakness with divine strength. Don't you want to be fortified? It turns, listen to this. And y'all are not going to like this word. But when I looked it up in the thesaurus, this was the best word for it it turns human stupidity into heavenly wisdom and gives to troubled souls the peace of God amen you are not wise in any form until you accept Jesus Christ as your savior and learn to read the word because the word is wisdom and knowing the word of God. And it's, it's where wisdom lies. And it says it in the Bible. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So it says that it will turn our human stupidity into heavenly wisdom. How stupid I feel tonight. I'm going to be honest with you. I do. Because this has shown me where I am really lacking. This is the part. This is the part that I lack in. It gives to troubled souls the peace of God. We know not what prayer cannot do. We thank you, great God, for the mercy seat. A choice proof of thy marvelous loving kindness help us to use it correctly throughout this day and every day right i hope you enjoyed tonight's bible lesson thank you great god for the mercy seat thank you for showing them what it took to go into that tabernacle and be in the holiest of holies Thank you for splitting that veil in two so that we have access to you through Jesus Christ. For Adam separated us from God forever through sin. But Jesus Christ was the most beautiful, perfect, and willing sacrifice for all of our sin. And he made a way for us to humbly bow before our great God and have access through him as our intercessor and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord for all of it. Praise him tonight. I hope this has helped you as much as it helped me. And when I sat down here tonight, I'll be real with you. Um, because I am still behind of all the all of the chores that I need to do tonight. And um, you know, and it, it makes me nervous and full of anxiety, and and all I need to do is bow before the Lord to get down on my hands and knees and thank him and ask him to help me finish out what I need to get done before I leave and ask him to be with me and Chris as we travel and give it all to him and stop carrying it on the back of my shoulders like I've done all day today. Praise God for Bible study. Praise God for y'all and praise the Lord for real Southern woman because I'm telling you, 
It is so important that it's in my life. I will be uh, here tomorrow at 7.30, Lord willing. And then we will take our vacation. This is the first vacation, I'm not kidding, that we have had in 10 years. That we weren't going fishing on a fishing trip down to the beach for Krista Fish. I'm serious. It has been that long since we've been to Disney World with our kids. Um, I'm excited. And uh, I know that we're going to have a good time. And we chose a place. We chose Boston so that I could walk better because there's better transportation and trolleys and, and things that we can hop on and hop off to see different sites. And I will. I know me. We'll get up early. We'll get started. I'll slow down around lunchtime. We'll go back and rest. And then we'll go again. And we'll be in, in the room every night by 730, I'm sure. But I'm sure we'll have a wonderful time. And we'll be flying Delta. <laughs> if y'all want to make sure, I don't, I don't worry about flying. I don't worry about dying because I know I belong to the Lord. I'm serious. I know I, I know that when my, uh, when my last breath is taken here, I will be with my Jesus in heaven, and I'm not a bit scared. Um, that's why we went wanted to go to Boston mainly for the transportation, hop on, hop off kind of things. Uh, there's so much right there in one little area that I won't have to walk very far to see things um, because my legs and my feet really aren't that good. And that way I can see more. Matter of fact, that's one of the reasons we haven't been anywhere. I'd love to go to Disney World, but I just just thinking about walking just kills me. And the last time I went, it was actually when I had gotten over chemotherapy and stuff. and I think we got a wheelchair for just part of it, a little part of it for me. Um, but I just don't want to do that. You know, I want to be able to walk. And so uh, I'm going to have to start biting the bullet and start just going anyway. Me and Chris are at an age to get out and enjoy things while we can. And we need to do that while we can. And so we were determined to try to get to Boston uh, before it gets too cold. Okay. Um, three days darkness. What is that? I don't know what you're talking about, Brian. If you're in Revelation, honey, I ain't worried about anything in Revelation because I'm going to be with Jesus. Um, I, I don't, I don't study on Revelation. I actually, I, ha I do have a Revelation Bible though, a Bible that's based around revelation that you could study revelation with um I've, i love bibles i got all kind of bibles um teresa j is going through chemotherapy right now i'll be glad when you're finished with it too sweetie i really will it is such a blessing to be done it's scary i'm not gonna lie when you get finished with chemotherapy you're gonna go well you know what i'm glad i'm finished but i'm a little nervous because now nothing's in me fighting this cancer and then you get kind of scared but it goes away but it's natural to feel that way I did and a lot of my friends have done the same thing um, I will see you guys tomorrow let's go to the Lord in prayer and hopefully if the Lord is willing we will show you some uh, shots from Boston I don't know Chris may want to do that on his channel so just be watching for uh, the different channels to see where we decide to put it I don't know that I'll put it on the cooking channel um, so maybe we'll put it on Chris's or Real Southern Woman or something. We'll see. Um, we're going to, Brian, that's in Isaiah. That's another prophecy book. <laughs> I'll look and see what you're talking about, but I'm not sure. Chris probably knows. Um, Tammy, the trolls have been running wild tonight. You know what? Um, I can't. I can't. Um, Watch for trolls while I'm doing Bible study. And Chris does not watch for me. If someone wants to be a sweet, if someone that's faithful and knows that you're always going to be here, or if the Lord's will and you could be here, um, someone could help me be a moderator on this channel. It would be a blessing. If you're interested in that, send me an email to Tammy 
at collardvalleycooks.com, Tammy at collardvalleycooks.com. Now, if I don't pick, you don't get your feelings hurt because I can only pick one. What I might do is uh, put you all in a, in a jar and draw a name. That would be the most fair way to do it. Uh, but I really do need a uh, moderator on Real Southern Woman. Uh, Chris helps me with YouTube. My sister helps me with Facebook. But I have no one to help me with Real Southern Woman. Uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And I thank everybody for being here. I hope y'all have a blessed and wonderful night. And Lord knows, after tonight's lesson, I hope and pray that we all bow before the Lord. You know, um, in the Bible, they have... Um, It takes me a minute. Altars. In the Bible, they have altars. And um, that is where you go to pray. And they would build an altar everywhere they went and everywhere they resided. And I really need to have an altar in my home and I don't. And I don't mean I'm going to set up, you know, a, a symbol or anything. I just mean there should be a place in our home that we can really, if we possibly can, physically get on our knees and bow before the Lord because it humbles us. It really does. My papa did it every night of his life and I really need to make a habit of it. Now, I'm not saying that God don't hear your prayers unless you're on your knees. I'm just saying it's humbling for us to do it, just like it's humbling for us to go down to the altar when we're in church. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight and I love everybody. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for this Bible study. And I thank you for my spirit battling the flesh tonight as it came time for Bible study. And I had to set all of my work to the side and get by myself quietly in front of this computer and read your word. I thank you for the fact that I didn't. Um succumb to my flesh and cancel Bible study and that I abided and, and I was faithful in reading this um, tonight for we never know, Lord, what you have in store for us. And tonight's Bible study was so impactful on me and I hope it was for others. And I'm so thankful for Charles Spurgeon. I'm so thankful for your word. I'm so thankful for Real Southern Woman. And um, we just want to praise you, Lord, for without you, none of this would be possible. And um, we just love you. May we all humble ourselves more. May we see what you're capable of by asking you. For if we ask not, we know not. And I've never been one to think that way. But Lord, I know that you know sometimes I do have desires. And we have desires. May we be honest in our prayers with you. Just be with us as we go throughout today. I mean, tonight, help us have a good night's sleep. Keep us all safe and from temptation. And we will all meet again here tomorrow night at 730. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed night. I love you. Bye.